One of the deep delights for me in your Lordship's house is the fact that we have such deep divides in opinion, and yet we can still stay polite. And that was how I found myself during the referendum campaign when I was campaigning to leave the EU. I found myself in some very unsavoury company at times, <coughs> some people with whom I shared not a single view, apart from the fact that the, the UK would be better off outside the EU. And I believe passionately that we have made the right decision, but at the same time, we have to be absolutely sure that we go about it in the right way. The bill that the government has presented to us is simply inadequate. Had there been a decent white paper with some detail about the things that many of us care about, then I think that I would have felt calmer about voting for the bill as it exists. However, the Prime Minister is approaching these negotiations with a blank sheet of paper. Where are the underlying principles? There are underlying principles in the EU. Where are our underlying principles that we are going to maintain during negotiations? Or are there to be no principles at all? The Green Party is particularly concerned that the Cabinet will attempt to dump protections, whether environmental or social, and protections from everything from wildlife and countryside to the sort of social protections that we see as normal within society nowadays. And the government could use a combination of exit negotiations and secondary legislation to do all, all sorts of things that the majority of people who voted leave would not actually want to happen. It's wrong to use the referendum result as cover for bypassing proper parliamentary procedure and proper parliamentary scrutiny. And the Lords has a job of ensuring that a democratic process is followed through all, all the way through the different stages of the negotiations. Now, uh, as somebody who's advocated leaving the EU ever since we joined as a result of the 1975 European Communities Membership Referendum, I resent people suggesting that I'm out to wreck the bill by putting amendments. I think that someone even said it would be traitorous. I think that's a very unpleasant thing to say about people who are trying to improve things, who are trying to make things better. And as for threats from the other place, that they will abolish the House of Lords and replace it um, with some other sort of chamber or abolish it altogether, um, I, personally, that would be a welcome bonus. I believe that it is time for us to be abolished and a democratically elected chamber to replace us. However, so for me, that's absolutely no threat at all. But of course, threats like that are bullying. And what do we do with bullies? We stand up to them. And so I'm going to try to amend this bill. I've put five amendments, which I feel would very definitely improve the bill. And I will support other amendments from other members of your Lordship's House um, because it's our job to advise, it's our job to reform and improve the sometimes very poor legislation coming from the other place. My five amendments will cover the following areas. It will be about transitional arrangements, legal enforcement, environmental regulators, access to justice and employment and equality protections. I think these are self-evident. And my amendments will ask for detailed plans, lots of preparation and proper funding, which I know this government has a huge problem with. I'm going to keep my remarks very brief because some of the things I would like to say are probably best not said. But before finishing, I would like to add that I also commend the amendment from a recommendation of the Joint Committee on Human Rights, which will protect the residents' rights of EU citizens legally resident in the UK at the time of the uh, referendum on 23rd of June 2016. I do think it, it's a precautionary amendment, but I do think that it's so self-evident and, and so cruel not to include it that I can't see why the government should have any objection in having it on the face of the bill. Finally, I'd like to say that although 
Obviously, the outcome of the vote last year was what I wanted. I don't think I've taken a moment's pleasure from it in the intervening time, simply because it's been a cause, partly through the, the way the campaigns work, on both sides were conducted, but also since, there has been so much hatred, so much vile rhetoric that has inflamed people, and I'm sure many of us here have had abuse, um, which I think is, is normally part of a progressive politician's um, uh, inbox, but I think has reached levels that are just incredible. I feel that issues like immigration are something that we should, be take, that we should take pleasure in. Immigration actually is good for our country. It's good for the economy. It's also good for our culture. I also believe that the free movement of people is something that if you accept free trade, then why not accept the free movement of people? And so when we look at this bill and when we actually vote on it next week, I do hope that the government understands that we mustn't lower our standards whether it's on food or on social protection or on protecting our countryside, we simply must not go down the route of making things worse because, in a sense, society is already worse from this referendum and the government must do everything in its power to heal as much as possible.